um, just popping in for a brief second to um, to mention this book which I just read last night. This is uh, It's Not What You Thought It Would Be by Lizzie Stewart. Lizzie Stewart is um, a writer but also like an illustrator for lots of um, kids books and stuff so you might recognise her style of drawing which is lovely. Um, but this is, um, so it's like an adult graphic novel, it's about kind of coming of age, it's really sweet and um, sad about, you know, just about sort of teenage friendships, it's about, so it's told in little vignettes throughout their sort of young life um, of these two friends and how they'd hang out at school and they were really close and then it sort of sort of jumps back and forth to the uh, their adulthood where they're um, one of them's gone off to university and one of them stayed home which is kind of you know a thing that sort of happens a lot doesn't it and um, they kind of have a bit of distance between them and then suddenly it's like eight years go by and they, they haven't sort of heard from each other um, and it's you know it's quite um, upbeat kind of ending and everything but it's yeah it sort of made me a bit sad last night and um, or maybe I'm just a bit sad at the moment anyway it's Cancer Full Moons yeah, we're all in our feelings, yeah. but for me it doesn't have any. Um, yeah, you know how I feel about this, sort of nostalgic stuff. Um, so yeah, it has that thing about um, navigating the world as a young woman, and this sort of constant being looked at and gazed at by everyone and feeling in danger. But then also it's just about um, those really close friendships that you have in adolescence, which are really difficult to hold on to in your adulthood and how you have to then like be a grown-up and live your own life and um, be self-reliant, I guess. Um, but it's really lovely. Uh, I got it at the library and, I, I, you know, I've already read like a graphic novel for the um, for the reader form, but I got out quite a few, so um, there's a few more for me to get through as well. But I'm really glad I found this. Um, really relatable and uh, really beautiful illustrations. There's one bit in particular where they find this kind of dying fox this is when they're children, and they decide they're going to build a little um, shelter for it out of like bits and things they find. And I just love this picture; it's so sweet. And lots of like they just deck it with like flowers and stuff in coke cans and things like that. Right. Yeah. I just caught Toffee out here, and I saw that she had some gunk. Oh, here she is, Toffee. Show them what you've done. Um, she's covered in blood and feathers. So I think she's found a bird around here. I was just about to try and clean her up, but I'm not touching her now. Uh. Toffee's been right bad. Meanwhile, guys, let me show you what I've done here today. I've redone our entire hallway uh, cabinet. Um, so this is now an official non-fiction zone. So what I've done is I've... A lot of it is sort of mainly sort of Shan's book, so it's lots of witchcraft and nature type stuff. And then just a whole mishmash of various non-fiction... Largely ones that we've already read, because we've got piles of unread elsewhere. We've also redone the whole top area. It feels really fresh and good now. And the window area. So I think it's looking lovely, and we've even got this whole floor space now, which was piles of books here. We do have a little over here just on top of the radiator but we don't really we don't, we don't use this little heater and that's my wife hi witch casket and in my pajamas i got to go to work the post just come so we're going to quickly unbox witch casket which is the first one i've ever had are we excited yeah yeah witch casket Mindful magic. Oh, the 
it's cute a little postcard no she's shrimp that's really cute yeah i saw this online and i thought i liked the artwork they included which mm. i usually don't like i've got a mug let's have a look at the mug it says what's your poison on it oh that's good is it only it was a little tin oh this is cute oh, i like these mugs that. that's really lovely isn't it already i think worth getting yeah that's cute okay what have we got here this is a bright blessings bath shower ritual so i won't open that but it's got little bits i guess you can do in the you can do it in the bath it's got a little bathy stuff nice so moat it be there's probably a spoiler card somewhere i should I'll look at that up what's this Just like a candle. Yeah, you put your little holder? candle, one of the spell candles in there. black candle over there. Yeah, and perhaps they'll have one in you as well. That's nice, isn't yeah, it? That's lovely. Oh, there's some candles. Oh, lovely. Spell candles. That's really cute. So they'll, oh, they're lovely colours as well. Also, everything in this box is vegan, which yeah, is another. Because the other one wasn't, was it? The other one was vegetarian, and yeah. it, actually what I had is vegan, but it didn't say. So they'll go in there. Bit wonky. Well, it's we'll all right. have to put once, a bit of wax. Once they and... wax, oh, there we go. Wax up. That's lovely, that is. That's nice, yeah. isn't it? Okay. Incense. Sandalwood and patchouli. Oh, there's a two nice. of my face. Yeah, me too. Oh, what's it broken the box? But that's fine. Mmm, they're good. They're good. They're good. Are you happy with this box so far? Yeah. Oh, how cute. So there's two cups of tea. Chamomile and lavender tea. Sounds nice, doesn't it? It says, brew with intent, stir clockwise and affirm. I release all my anxiety and accept the presence, so mote it be. Mm -hmm. Nice, we'll have one each. One each. Crystal. Oh, that's nice. So it's a green jasper. Oh, Jasper. Like. Mm. It says new beginnings on it. It goes with your wrap as well. It's like a little wooden it? egg. Wooden egg with yeah. a symbol on it. Yeah. Let's have a look. It's a wooden meditation egg made of wood for its grounding properties and etched with our new beginning sigil. Our exclusive meditation egg can be used as a tactile meditation aid or placed on your odd altar to beautifully symbolise creativity, rebirth and new beginnings. Never heard of a meditation egg. It makes sense, I think, that, that thing of holding on to the yeah. of feel it. Yeah. Got an enamel pin. Good. That's cute. It's cute. A little journal, which has mindful magic on it. Oh, that's cute. And inside, it's got, I mean, you know. <laughs> I doubt I do these. I don't really do these things, but I'm it's sorry. kind Journals. of sweet. Journals. Nice, and then last thing is this little spell. Um, oh, I don't know if it's like a page for your grimoire. Oh, I see. Oh, it just says it talks about um being mindful. This is really nice, I think, isn't it? So yeah. It's got some little tips about being mindful. So, there's um, there's this little thing has got all what's in it on it. Um, so it tells you a little bit about it, about each one. What's in that bright blessings? So in the bath shower ritual kit, you've got rose petals, chamomile and marigold to put in your bath. I think that's delightful. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah. yeah. yeah do you like it? It's Friday morning again. <laughs> I'm in the same position. I know I've filmed like a few little bits during the week, but um, I haven't done much and I haven't done much filming. And I haven't read that much during the week. So I think, I guess most of my reading 
is on the weekend. So I kind of try and pick something for the weekend. Um, so I thought I'd tell you what I'm going to read, what the plan is, but also some other stuff. So, oh, what I'm currently reading is this one. I started this last weekend. This is The Trial of Lizzie Borden, a true story by Cara Robertson. And I'm not even halfway through yet. Um, so it's, it's non-fiction. And it's come out kind of relatively recently, so it's using a bit more kind of court documents, I think, about the whole trial. It's actually really interesting, and I am liking it, but it's not like, um, I think I was talking before about how I really like a personal element in nonfiction, and it doesn't have any of that, which is actually kind of, you know, appropriate, I guess. But um, I am still liking it, you know, as well, but it's not like a massive page turn. It's quite detailed, um, but kind of touches on really interesting things. So I, I'll continue to read this. Um, I am joining it. Then, I have been reading My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones, and I'm on page 110. So I don't know if you remember, but um, The Only Good Indians was my favourite book of 2020, so I loved it. And then I've um, read like a couple of his other ones and not really got on with them, but I wondered if that was because they were quite short ones. So I was really excited for this one which came out last year, um, and it's, yeah, sort of based on sort of slasher, meta slashers, uh, and it says about the main character is an outcast, half Indian with an abusive father, <clears throat> an absent mother in a town that wants nothing to do with her, and she's doing like a personal history of horror films, and then I think there's some like kills are happening in the town. I'm not really enjoying that. <laughs> I feel like I could carry on. Like I know that he's a he is a good writer. I really like him. Um, I feel I could keep reading because there's nothing. I do find his prose often a little bit con confusing, um, and you have to really concentrate on it. But yeah, I don't. I don't know if I'm. I'm not really enjoying it. So I'm like I'm not just not getting into it. So I'm considering DNFing it you can let me know if you loved it I feel from watching other people's reviews is that you either like this one or you like The Only Good Indians because I've seen a lot of people saying they loved this but didn't like The Only Good Indians so I wonder if that's the thing and I'm Only Good Indians kinda gal so that's that so I might DNF that one and then I started a couple and I'm thinking I don't know if these are for me either so I did start just I read a few pages of Chewet by Claire Oshetsky, which is recommended to me by Molly for like my 12 books in 12 months. Um, and it sound, I really like the sound of this one. It's about a woman who kind of gives birth to what she says is an owl, like an owl baby. Um, but I think it's sort of like a commentary on, um, I, I, don't, I think like her children are, she calls them non-conforming children. There you go. So I think it's like a commentary on, on that. Um, I read a few pages. I thought, yeah, I read a few pages. And I don't I don't think it's for me. So I'm going to return that. Then I picked up Asylum Road, Olivia Sudjuk. I can see that this is good. <laughs> read a few pages. I don't think it's for me. I'm taking that back as well. And then what I have settled on, so I needed to swap something out for my 12 and 12. Someone did recommend this one to me. I think it was 70s reader recommended. I know this light is really bad, but I kind of feel I look nice for it. So it's Dear Sentheran, or Dear Sentheran by um, A Quake Maisie. Um, I've struggled with some A Quake Maisie before. Like I've tried fresh water a couple of times and not been able to get through it. Um, I tried their latest one, The Death of Vivek OG. No. I've just read a few pages of this one and I think that this might be it. I think this is it. So I'm going to read this one. So that's this weekend. In a roundabout way, these are the two books I'm going to read this weekend. Let me know your thoughts on My Heart as a Chainsaw and any other other of these books. I feel slightly that I'm in, like not in a um, great reading kind of mind frame. Because... You know, like sometimes you can just read anything and you're happy to read it. And sometimes it's like, I just feel really fussy. Like, um, things I pick up, they just don't feel quite right. So I'm acknowledging that 
while talking about these three books. I feel it's a little bit not them, it's me. So Hi. Got two boxes, one's got Lunch. cake. One's got cake. One's got salad. You've been to Kemi's. My favourite side, do you have a look? Yeah, let's have a look, shall we? Okay. Okay. I haven't checked it to see if it's not too horrible for you. There we go. Oh, look at that. It's a mixed salad, mixed vegan salad. It looks amazing, doesn't it? I don't know what that is. Like some kind of pumpkin y. Pumpkin. Carrots. It looks so good. And potatoes and red cabbage. And red cabbage. And then my little cake is like a raspberry. Oh, yeah. An almond, it says. Well, that's going to be nice. Is that your lunch? Yeah. It's Friday night, isn't it, Bertie? Yeah, Friday night. It's the best moment of the week. Tell me what's happened this Friday night. Well, okay, so we've just finished watching MB Reid's um, vlog, which is great, and now we're prepping for, well, before that, we had a really nice dinner with tortellini, um, broccoli, and like a sort of bit of bread, so Sean really, like, took it to the next level this evening, guys. You like that? It was really nice. Yeah. Um, I'm just preparing some cereal. Mm-hmm. Some flaxseed, if you're wondering what that stuff floating on the top is. Uh, this chocolate is quite new. It's so good. It's really good. If mm. you could, um, got it from Vegan Kind, but then when I went on there to like, you know, obsessively order about ten more, they were out of mm. stock. Yeah. Um, anyway, so today, um, I, after my last lollipopping of the week, I went to Shelf Life because they've reopened now, and I went and picked up my copy of Parable of the Sower, which is the my circle book club pick for January and February. Um, Amy was telling me that it's quite grim, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not sort of reading anything at the moment, so I'm just go straight into this. I think that one was done for the climate fiction book club as well, wasn't it? I'm not sure. I but think I, so. I think so we could watch good. that uh, live yeah. video. Yeah. So I read. Um, I, I started Kindred. And I DNF'd it because I wasn't really feeling it. But then I did read Clay's Ark and I really enjoyed that by Octavia Butler. Um, so I think this is going to be really good. Um, I think I'm going to enjoy this one. Um, and yeah, I'm having a really good sort of reading month as well. Are so, you? Yeah. Mine's not... I'm struggling a bit. But... Are you? I've started going to bed like super early. Mm. Like eight, half seven. <laughs> to have like a good like solid... Three hours of yeah. just reading time, and I'm getting through my books. And I'm, I just stay That's up it. and watch yoga vlogs. Yeah. 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 Um, so anyway, got that from there. And when I was there, I also picked this up for Sean. For me. This is shit Cassandra says. So. It's got such a good cover. By Gwen and then up there, oh, stories. So short stories. So I we know I'm not I've like a of. massive short story fan, but no. recently... But short story getting... actually did make your top ten. Yeah. It's more just like, sometimes it's just not good. That's right, Maybe yeah. people need to think about this a bit so more this, before they write them. On the back of it, it says, Margaret Atwood meets Buffy. In these funny, warm and furious stories of women at their breaking points from Hellenic times to today. Um, so yeah, I really don't know if it's going to be... The cover is great, so it's fine. Yeah. I, I, I think but it I think looks I'm good. So, I'm kind of tempted to is read it, these as is well. Is it like adult? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I hear you're reading your potentially your first five star read of the yes, year. I'm reading Quick and Rosie. Yeah. I'm loving it. Yeah, yeah, that's good. They're kind of like well, they're letters, but they feel sort of like essays. But the, the idea of letters did put me off slightly. Yeah. I'm gonna admit, and if that puts you off as well, they're more like mini essays. Yeah. Although I just went read one which is to Toni Morrison, who they didn't know. Um, yeah. But the other people, I don't know who they are. Kind of like a family. Mm. Mm. I love it.
doubled in size, isn't it? Yeah? Ready? Go. <laughs> Gosh, it's so warm. I just need to do a little knead for it again. Yeah. Oh God, it's nice, isn't it? It's ready, but I could do a reveal for you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. I'm going to do a little, well, I'll get this one out, but you don't, I don't know what looks nice. We've got some veg pop here. Hmm? Oh, yeah. this way I think because it's dark. Who is this distinguished gentleman? Me! Okay, okay which one is it? Well we so we've got two. So we've got Can I find it? this one. Grasshopper? Yeah. Yeah eighties, early nineties stuff I grew up yeah. listening to. on struggling recently which is probably why I haven't shown my face too much in recent days um, but I do a little catch up the dance party helped yeah yeah well, as you're saying we should do a dance party every week yeah we should yeah, yeah. can um, I before you get into your books mm. um, I've been like, doing this vlog I mean you've done bits too but mm. I've failed to mention that it's the no that's what I call summer reading vlog because like I've I've moved on yeah. So I'm <laughs> but that's what we're doing, yeah, isn't it? So I'm continuing to do the now that's what I call summer readathon. Um so the last vlog was like I covered quite a few of those. Mm -hmm. Um it's ongoing. Uh, I haven't really been doing as many as I would have liked to, although I think I've only got a couple of prompts left. Yeah. So what was the um Can you just send a postcard? But if you read all the books other than one. Other than one. Yeah. So yeah, I need to send a postcard to a friend. Yeah. Which I'll do. So I'm getting rid of some books, so I might just send like a book and a postcard oh, to someone. That's nice. Um, and then I need to read a book for set in the summer. Mm hmm So I've got two choices for that. And then do you think you're done after I'm that? I'm done, I think, okay. yeah. What are your choices for the summer one? Should we pick now? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I've picked two sort of summary covers here. So I've got um, a Ross MacDonald and an Elmore Leonard. Mm -hmm. So similar energy. Yeah, so as you can see, we've got the drowning pool, with a big swimming pool, on, and a Gold Coast of a swimming pool. Mm. Um, so the drowning pool, when Maud Slocum, beautiful, frightened and angry, comes to Lou Archer's office with a poison pen letter intended for her husband, he reluctantly agrees to help her. Blum, blum, blum. Some kind of, like, family secrets. Um, handsome ex-chauffeur. Pacific Refinery Company, Bloodshed. 
okay. graphic tale of adultery, jealousy, murder, and lies. So these are set in LA. Okay. So that's kind of summary. And Gold Coast. This is gorgeous widow Karen Dicilia just found out that it really what it means really means to be married to the mob. Her mafia husband Frank left her millions in a Florida Gold Coast mansion. He also left orders that she'd lose everything the day she slept with another man. With his boys as enforcers, Karen is soon a lonely lady. When she meets Detroit's Cal Maguire, sexy, street-smart ex-con with a scam to get Karen her money and her freedom, or get them both killed. I think I might have missed out some of the words there. <laughs> um, I think I'm drawn to that one. Yeah, I am as well. I'm quite, I quite like sort of flor. I mean, I love LA settings, yeah. but I do also like Florida settings. yeah. yeah. So they're both, you know, as you can tell, sort of... Uh, and they climbing. look about the same size as well, yeah. so that's not going to so help yeah, the choice. maybe you think we're thinking this one. And what are you reading at the moment? Or have you just finished something? Well, I've just finished The Blackbird. Uh, this is uh, Dorothy B. Hughes. Was that part of the... No. Okay. This was just a sort of palette cleanser. Okay, and how was that? This was good. It, was a, it wasn't as good as I've come to expect from Dorothy Hughes. So she's great, and I really love... Um, the other books by her that I've read, but this is the weakest of okay. them. But it's still like a free star. Is that like a sort of crime noir type thing? This is a more of a... Yeah, so it's set in the Second World War and it's about someone on the run um, and there's sort of FBI and the Gestapo and Nazis kind of involved. So it's a kind of like who is on her side, who isn't kind of intrigue. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, I don't know, it sort of dragged a little bit, but I, I, I'm glad I've read it. But then it's a keeper. Okay. Um, so I'm currently reading the 90s book club pick as well. So this has kind of got in the way of the read font, mm -hmm. But in a pleasant way. Um, so Parable of the Sower, Octavia E. Butler. Um, yeah, um, I'm enjoying this so far. It's really not the sort of thing that I would normally read, I don't think. Cause Why is that? What do you know, mean by I that? Because I do read lots of sci-fi, yeah. but I don't tend to read much dystopia. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, it is quite sort of grim, um, but I'm not finding it sort of difficult to read. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really good voice, and I kind of feel like it's kind of having a bit of a slow build-up. Mm. But I'm sort of invested in it. Okay. So the writing's good. Um, I, I want to have that thing that people that love Octavia Butler have, that sort of they sort of find some kind of magic in her ability to predict, I guess, the way things are going to go mm. is pretty amazing um but i want the book to be amazing as well and i think the, the the fact that the distance between the super rich and 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 the poor it will kind of win it we're there now aren't we i think like rich people are just like have like impossible to imagine amounts of money mm. and everyone else is kind of struggling yeah so i think this is that but extreme kind of thing anyway yeah enjoying it I, I'm, okay. I'm liking the i'm really liking the religion sort of aspect okay. of it so I think that's the bit, the bits that I'm enjoying the most are kind of, so she's sort of coming up with her own religion, the character in it. So it's kind of a young, I haven't really mentioned, it's a young girl. Okay. Um, um, and they're sort of, I guess, in the, the time that it's set, which is like 2024, uh, they're seen as kind of middle class because they live in a walled off area, even though like there's hardly any water, not much food, you have to like have a massive family to, to survive. Um, you know, you can't get a job and all that stuff. So, just in comparison to how bad the working classes are, mm. that's considered middle class. Mm. Um, and yeah, so she's uh, from a sort of black family, but the neighbourhood's quite sort of mixed. Um, and things seem to be getting worse politically and um, uh, ecologically and everything at, at this point. And she's planning for. A future where she's going to need to survive. Okay, well, I I don't mind. I quite enjoy dystopia, so yeah, maybe I'll get on with it. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's it's, re it's weirdly not reading very nineties. It feels really oh, timeless. Okay. It doesn't feel okay. It, like, it feels like it could come out now, or it yeah. could have come out in sixties, or do you know what I mean? It yeah. doesn't seem to have any, which is quite pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm also reading uh, this breaking convention. I'm going to zoom in on that because you can't really see. Oh, they, oh, there you go. Seems, it's a great cover, isn't it? Yeah, Essays on Psychedelic Consciousness. So this is from a, um, a conference that was held, and I think this, this is from the first one of those that was held, and this was held in Canterbury in 2011, Yeah. Um, where they bring different people from around the world to discuss um, the state of, uh, I guess, psychedelic research, um, 
now that it's back again kind of thing because it was um, we had like a 40 year or something um, period where people weren't allowed to research it or do anything mm. with it at all so um, and I think it's become like a yearly conference now uh, at least I've seen that other books have come out okay. from other conferences since um, this is uh, Tracing Neolithic Worldviews Shamanism Irish, Irish Passage Tomb Art and Altered States of Consciousness um, so yeah, it's about kind of how um, shamanism is an innate um, belief system or uh, figure in lots mm -hmm. of different cultures indigenous cultures and how uh, she's linking that to um, art found in ancient um, Irish tombs and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, you enjoying that one? Yeah, I'm enjoying it. And the essay before that was really good. It was about um, markings found in caves and how they're linked to um, rites to do with puberty mm -hmm. and how there are still kind of places and people that um, perform similar rites and how we now are considering the fact that they might have been um, related to uh, altered states of consciousness um, and uh, you know one really interesting thing um, that I found from this is that so it's sort of a lot of it sort of prehist prehistory and sort of um, early man or whatever um, and how the, the point that we mark um, uh, consciousness self-consciousness is really the point in which art starts to be created or aesthetic design starts to come out um, and how a lot of that we're linking now to possibly ingesting plants or mm. something that I guess added another level of thinking to our purely biological survival kind yeah. of needs before that um, yeah it's really interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm still reading uh Quick oh, you can hold it for me. Oh, nice. I'm in love with it. Yeah. There's a TikTok. Uh, I just did a little TikTok, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there is lots of um, stuff about uh, depression and, uh, like, suicidal ideation and, you know. So are we carrying on this vlog until you finish the whole readathon? Is that the plan? Well, I don't know. Hmm. We can just end it when we feel we've got enough time. But yeah. I mean, all I need to do you've, is you've only got that one book, so maybe finish just this, yeah. Get to one of these. Oh, that's okay. We can do that. Send we? a postcard. Um, Hannah's talk. talking about a book called The Book a of Difficult pages, Fruit. So maybe what are your thoughts on this, Bertie? Superfoods might be sold for their medicinal characteristics. Their high density nutrients may promote good health, and their righteous glow has certainly been documented by advertising. But superfood is a marketing pitch, not a medical term. Truly, medical.
there was a cafe close by. So we went in for a coffee and Liam tried out their blueberry croissant before we... I'll talk you through it. So mm. the pizzas, we forgot to sort of share the pizzas yesterday, so... Yeah, they were so good that we just ate we just kept, ate kept them. eating them. So I've made them, they don't look maybe as... Oh no, they still look good, don't they? They look delicious. They still look good. So and we've got another one just there as well. Might be slightly scorched. Mm, delicious. And then, so we're going to eat pizza yeah. again, and then I've made a potato salad. Potato salad, that looks mayonnaise great. mayonnaise and red onion. And then yeah. I've also made like a Greek salad with tomatoes, olives, and this Greek style yeah, cheese. Yeah, we're enjoying this, aren't we? I really like it. Because yeah. we bought the other one, um, Follow Your Heart one, but they were out of stock. Oh, so yeah. Um, yeah. I'm free from soya, this one, so it's made out of, it's coconut oil based. But it's crumbly and it doesn't really taste coconut oily. Mm. So there's lamb's lettuce if you lamb's want to as well. Okay. So, so we serve up? Yeah. So that one's chilli and mushroom. I made some separate ones. That's the coolest one.